So good morning. Now here's the question. Have you had breakfast this morning? Yeah. Did any of you have bacon? Nobody had bacon. Well, Brendan and I often enjoy a bacon roll on a Saturday morning. And Brendan likes his with a fried egg on top. Uh, it's often called an egg banjo. And it can be really messy as the yolk bursts and dribbles down his chin. <laughs> I like mine with mushrooms. <laughs> but, but I can guarantee that an hour or so later, I'm really thirsty. And if we're out and about, we'll often stop to get a drink. You know what it's like, I'm sure. Your lips become dry and your tongue stick, tends to stick to the roof of your mouth. I say I'm really thirsty, but the truth is I don't really know what real thirst is. As human beings, we can't survive long without water. Science tells us that we are nearly 80% water. And thirst is the alarm call that we need to take on water. And we ignore that call or be in a position where there is no water and see what happens. Max Lucado, in his book, Come Thirsty, says this. Coherent thoughts vanish, skin grows clammy, and vital organs wrinkle. Your eyes need fluid to cry. Your mouth needs moisture to swallow. Your glands need sweat to keep your body cool. Your cells need blood to carry them. Your joints need fluid to lubricate them. Dry mouth, thick tongue, achy head, weak knees. Deprive your body of necessary fluid and your body will tell you. But there's another thirst that we're going to look at today and that's described in our reading in Psalm 63. It's a psalm written by David in hiding in the wilderness of Judah. It says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. So in the desert place where there is no water, his thirst is for God. And you can hear his desperate longing equating his thirst for God with, de with desperate thirst for water. My whole being longs for you. Going back to Max Lucado, he says, deprive your body of necessary fluid and your body will tell you. Deprive your soul of spiritual water and your soul will tell you. Dehydrated hearts send desperate messages. Snarling tempers, waves of worry, growling mastodons of guilt and fear. You think God wants you to live with these? Hopelessness, sleeplessness, loneliness, resentment, irritability, insecurity. These are warnings, symptoms of a dryness deep within. Do any of these resonate with you? Or are you just feeling distant from God, disconnected, perhaps abandoned? Then perhaps you're suffering from spiritual dehydration. Now here in the UK, whether we take on enough water is purely down to us. But that's not so in some parts of the world or in some situations. And I'm sure that you've seen adverts on the telly for water aid or similar, where families are forced to drink foul water because there is no alternative, risking disease and even death. They will do anything to have a drink. And in many ways, that's a picture of our society today. Every human being who has ever lived was designed to worship and to worship the living God. We are designed with a thirst for him. He wants that loving, close relationship with us. But many, many people today try to satisfy that longing, that thirst with something other than God and his son, Jesus. They worship other idols, money, wealth, celebrity, fame, status, power, lust, the list goes on. Or they search for meaning by investigating the occult, mediums, tarot, astrology, spiritualists, all things specifically forbidden in the Bible. Like contaminated water, these things are harmful and will lead to spiritual disease and even death. And unlike those who are forced to drink contaminated water to satisfy their physical thirst, we have a choice as to how to satisfy our spiritual thirst. To thirst for the living God, like David did in the desert, 
or to opt for the dangerous, contaminated spirituality or modern idols or ideologies. So maybe you're thinking you're perhaps a bit spiritually dehydrated. Perhaps you're a new Christian, you're still sussing things out, but perhaps can sense that there's something more. You're feeling those first pangs of thirst. Or perhaps you're still investigating this Christian thing. You know there's something missing in your life. You're struggling with some of the things listed above, loneliness, fear, anxiety or guilt. Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time, but you've lost that first love, that passion, that excitement, the sure knowledge of Jesus' presence with you. In that case, you're identifying with King David in the desert when he says in verse 2 of the psalm, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. He's been there, but for whatever reason, David is not in that place now. Is that you? I know that's me sometimes. Do we identify with any of these? So perhaps you're now thinking, well, maybe I am thirsty. A physical thirst is easy to deal with. We just need to take on fluid. In fact, in our society today, it's a wonder that some of us aren't overdoing it, being permanently attached to a water bottle. But how do we satisfy our spiritual thirst? Well, firstly, we need to recognize our need and then make sure we're looking in the right direction to satisfy that need. Do we identify with the list of things I've already spoken about? Irritability, resentment, guilt, fear, loneliness, rejection. Are we looking for satisfaction elsewhere? Perhaps in ungodly relationships, seeking fulfillment through our possessions or status. Just spend some time later asking the Holy Spirit to show you if there's anything which would point to a spiritual thirst. And maybe it's just as I've already said, you just don't feel close to God anymore. The Bible has become boring. You don't really want to pray and worship seems dry. You're not even sure that God loves you. If any of things strike a chord with you, then you are probably thirsty. This is the first step to admitting your need of spiritual water. Listen to how the psalmist explains this. In Psalm 42, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Psalm 143 says, I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. And secondly, what did David do in the desert immediately after admitting his need of God? He worshipped. He says, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I'll be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Do you always feel like worshipping? I don't. Sometimes I'd far rather listen to Greatest Hits Radio than Premier Praise. And sometimes you'd rather have a gin and tonic than a big glass of water to quench our thirst. I know, I know it's me. But we know which would be better for us, don't we? But if we're feeling spiritually dry, then perhaps we should follow David's example and worship despite how we're feeling. It's quite easy nowadays. You can put on an old-fashioned CD if you've still got a CD player. You can go to YouTube and search for Christian worship playlists or download on Spotify or Amazon Music or tune in to Premier Praise or UCB and just let the music waft over you to begin with. Or perhaps meditate on a psalm or other favorite Bible passage or just use words of worship in your prayers. Or whatever you choose, do it. The third thing we should do is to listen to God's invitations to us. He really does want to satisfy our thirst. Here are some of them. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. And you remember this next passage from just a few weeks ago when Chris Curtis spoke about the woman at the well. In John 4, it says, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. 
But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. And then there's John 7, verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. And at the end of the Bible, in Revelation 21, it says, He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And Revelation 22 says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. In these verses, we see that it's Jesus who satisfies our thirst. It's Jesus who is the giver of the living water, a free gift for whoever who asks. We need to know Jesus, not just to know about him, but to invite him to take part in our lives. When we do that, whether for the first time or every day, he promises to satisfy our spiritual thirst. Jesus offers us the invitation to come to him to have our thirst satisfied, to receive the living water that only he can give. And we just need to accept that invitation. And the last point I'm going to cover this morning is linked to what we've been talking about on a Sunday morning for the last few weeks how we can give, but not just our money, our time and our talents. What is it that God wants us to do to serve him? In Matthew 5, 6, it says in the version we normally use in, char in church, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. But in the Good News version, it translates as, happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. So if you're feeling empty or dissatisfied, sensing that there's more than you're currently experiencing, thirsty for more of God, and spend time asking him some questions. What plans do you have for me? How can I serve you, Lord, in the church or in our community? Who should I be encouraging? What gifts have you given me that I can use for you? How can I be obedient? When your greatest desire is to do what God requires, then the promise is that you will be fully satisfied. So how are you doing with all of this? Have you been feeling thirsty for more of God for a while now? Or perhaps it's just this morning that you've realized there's something missing. When I'm thirsty after my bacon roll, just licking my lips doesn't do the trick. I need some big gulps of water. But it doesn't end there. Later in the day, I still need to drink. I need to keep drinking every day to keep my body healthy. And it's the same with the living water that Jesus offers. We need to keep drinking from the well to keep us spiritually healthy. It's not just a one-off thing. So if you know you're thirsty for God, I'm going to ask you to respond to Jesus' invitation in John 7. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Just by coming up and taking a cup of water from behind me to drink. And let me say that there is nothing magical or special about this water. It came out of the tap in the kitchen this morning. Drinking this water alone won't quench your spiritual thirst. But by coming up, you are admitting your need for more of God in a practical way, and God will respond. So, as it says in Revelation, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Amen.